hi everyone uh, welcome back to my youtube channel uh, today i'm going to talk about uh, how to apply the factorization theorem and the uh, lemma and chefe lemma to find a sufficient statistic and a minimum sufficient statistic so let's say we have n observations with uh, this given probability density function which is a uh, 1 over theta times e to the power negative x minus theta divided by theta and we have this indicator function that implies that all the values of x is between theta and infinity so our question needs to find uh, the sufficient statistic and a minimum sufficient statistic for this uh, unknown parameter theta of this uh, distribution so uh, first we are going to find uh, the sufficient statistic and the main tool that we are going to use is the factorization theorem so first uh, we will recall uh, what is the factorization theorem tells you so the factorization theorem tells you that our joint probability density function of all the values of x uh, if we can rewrite it like this that means uh, if we can rewrite it uh, based on uh, two functions that means as a product of two functions the first one is uh, a function of the sufficient statistic which is a g of tx given theta and you can see that a g of uh, tx uh, div uh, divided by theta is actually depending on theta if that is the case we can tell that this t of x is our sufficient statistic and there's another function which is h of x which is a function of uh, only the observations of x but that function is not depending on theta so if we can rewrite our uh, joint density function like this then based on the factorization theorem this uh, t of x will uh, uh, will be called as our uh, sufficient statistic so so uh, in this question what we are going to do is first uh, we are going to write our joint density function of these uh, random variables uh, and then we are going to find our sufficient statistic based on the factorization theorem. So first we will write our joint density function. So if we write our joint density function that means here we can uh, we assume that all the values of x are independently and identically distributed if that is the case uh, in order to find the joint distribution we can just uh, find the product of uh, individual densities uh, which is denoted here so if you simplify this it will be equal to 1 over theta to the power n times e to the power negative uh, sum of xi minus theta divided by theta and also we have this indicator function which is indicator uh, which tells you that all the values of x is between theta and infinity so if you simplify this you can observe this that means e to the power theta to the power uh, 1 over theta to the power n times uh, we can uh, simplify uh, this function uh, this exponential function like this that means we can uh, separate the function uh, expressions over there so if you separate the uh, elements over there it will be equal to e to the power negative uh, sum of xi minus uh, n times theta divided by theta and we can rewrite this indicator function like uh, this indicator function of the uh, minimal order statistic which is greater than theta because here we observe that all the values of x is between theta and infinity that uh, that uh, that is same as uh, the all the values uh, um, that is same as our minimal order statistic is always greater than theta. So if you uh, rearrange the terms here, then we can write uh, we can observe this function, which is uh, one over theta to the power n times e to the power n times e to the power negative sum of x i divided by theta and we have this indicator function of the minimal order statistic so here you can see basically there are two functions that involve x um, that involve both x and uh, thetas so the, uh, the 
first turn is uh, e to the power sum of x uh, e to the power negative uh, sum of x i divided by theta and the second one is this indicator function which is a minimal order statistic is greater than theta so if you uh, think uh, think as this uh, sum of x i as a, a t1 then this uh, e to the power negative uh, sum of x i divided by theta is like a function of this t1 given theta okay and in a similar fashion if you think like this uh, minimal order statistic as our t2 then this indicator function is uh, is like a, a function of this t2 given theta okay so so in other words uh, this uh, first function it is the g of t1 given theta and this second function is a g of t2 given theta so based on the factorization theorem so based on the factorization theorem we can tell that um, the sum of xi and x1 is a sufficient uh, heuristic for theta because uh, we have found this uh, g of uh, tx given theta and our h of x so so in this example if you consider our h of x is uh, actually equals to 1 because there are no other terms that involve only x values so our h of x is equal to 1 so based on the factorization theorem that it can uh, we can observe that this uh, sum of xi and minimal order statistic is our complete uh, sufficient statistic okay so so in this example there are two sufficient statistics so next uh, we are going to find uh, the minimal order uh, minimal sufficient statistic uh, to find the minimal sufficient statistic we are going to use this uh, Lehman and Sheffe uh, lemma so this uh, Lehman and Sheffe lemma tells you that this tx is our minimal order minimal sufficient statistic tx t of x will be our minimal sufficient statistic for theta if uh, for every two sample points x and y this ratio of these uh, joint densities that means uh, f of x divided by theta divided by f of y given theta is free of theta if that is the case we can tell that a t of x will be our minimal order statistic so in other words what you are going to do is we are going to find the ratio of these two densities and then t of x will be a minimal sufficient statistic if t of x is equal to t of y so we are going to prove that based on this example so first we are going to find our joint density we are going to find our joint density so based on the previous calculation of uh, finding the uh, sufficient statistic we can easily find uh, this ratio of uh, f of x given theta divided by f of y given theta which is equal to this which is 1 over theta to the power n times e to the power uh, sum of x i divided by uh, sum of x i minus theta divided by theta times this indicator function over uh, 1 over theta to the power n times e to the power sum of y i divide, uh, minus theta divided by theta and also we have this indicator function so we can simplify this like we did in our previous calculation uh, into this which is equal to e to the power negative sum of x i divided by theta times indicator function of the uh, minimal order statistic and we have to divide this thing by e to the power negative sum of y i divided by theta times this indicator function because all the other terms are common to uh, both uh, both numerator and denominator so uh, those terms will be cancelled out so here you can see this ratio will be uh, free of theta that means it, it will be a constant 
if and only if what if and only if this sum of xi is equal to uh, sum of yi and this x of 1 is equal to y sub 1 okay if those two conditions are satisfied then we can see that this ratio will be free of theta hence it will be constant okay so so in other words this ratio is free of theta if and only if this uh, sum of xi is equal to sum of yi and uh, minimum order statistics are equal so by Lehman and Sheffield lemma it can be said that this sum of xi and uh, x sub 1 that or in other words this minimum order statistic is a minimum sufficient statistic for theta all right so the, that is how we can apply this uh, uh, this uh, factorization theorem and Lehman and Chef lemma to uh, to this problem and to find uh, this sufficient statistic and a minimum sufficient statistic. So if you think this video is useful to you, uh, just put a thumbs up to my uh, video. And if you want to see uh, more videos like this in future, uh, please subscribe my YouTube channel. Thank you.